Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says exactly 10 o'clock. Big Ben will be just striking up in London, I suppose. What is it? Wednesday night. Um, back with two for tomorrow. One over hurls and one on the goo. The goo saved us today and the goo saved us yesterday. Um, shout out first to a few newcomers on the bus. Um, Fraser Brunton, uh, Robert Duthie, Matthew Peters, he's in East Anglia in the UK, and Paddy McAlinden. I don't know where Paddy is from. I remember I played football once upon a time with a man who was called Paddy Linden. He was a goalkeeper for Monaghan. Played football in Chicago with him one summer. He was great crack at the restaurant. His uh, his specialty every day when he used to look at the menu, he used to ask them, have you any pan-fried perch? That was what he used to love. Pan I never heard any man looking for them before, since, or... Or, or, or uh, after, as to say. Um, anyway, you're all very welcome. Uh, we had two running today, three running today. Um, I thought we were getting off to a great start with only fools. But he was only fooling us coming to the last. And it was won by a horse that had won first time out on good to Ferrum. Was pulled up on soft ground last July and won today. At a big price, 14 to 1 or something. I think there was a bit of money for it. But um, it was one I didn't expect to win in that ground. And then we had uh, we had no chance of winning the next one at all, you could see. Because see, the JP's money was down. A horse, uh, it was best over 40 lengths in every race it ran. Uh, rated 73. It was, it's probably the, the lowest rated animal in his colours. I would imagine. Uh, they probably thought to the stone in, but he didn't get up to win. It was a big gamble at him. Eights into five to two. We went out in front and we got tired and we fell out of the back of the television and then to the left to Mount Athos, uh, similar to the one last night, to show us a bit of money and great battling qualities and a great ride from James Doyle. And he... Uh, Julie obliged. That's definitely the third, if not the fourth, time he has won for us. So, good see Harris. Loves Kempton. Um, be interested to see what will they do with him uh, on the turf this year. Anyway, I was doing a bit of visiting this evening. I was up to see my neighbour. Uh, hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. She's 91. She had been in hospital, but she's doing well. Um, I won't be seeing them as often. And I was visiting a man yesterday. He's 96. He's out of hospital but in great form as well. And you should see the, the plate of stuff. He was wolfing into yesterday. Uh, bacon and... There was no cabbage on the plate. Bacon and turnips and mashed potatoes. He said we'll split it and, and uh, I, I'd eat half. Um, but I never a man of that age to have such a constitution to, and uh, the woman that cooks every day for him, she says, that's no bother to him at all. So I hope he gets to see a hundred. As I said, two for tomorrow. There's a a race here. It's a great little race tomorrow. There's some. It's a grand, a grand race. Um, that uh, know when to hold him. It's his first run for a new yard. Uh, used to be with Milton Harris, and then it went to Anthony Charlton. It was impressive enough the last time. Uh, for Anthony Charlton. Um. In Newbury, but the horse that he bet that's a Jassel way, um, it's not hectic. At, it was better a couple of years ago. Um, you have Protectorat's half brother in it as well, Montegaard. Uh, needed the run the last time. I wouldn't be surprised if that run well as well tomorrow. Uh, Montegaard. Um, I, I like the look of yesterday. Uh, this won a it was 5 to 1 area was, had it as an each way bet it won a pint to pint on, on, in Boulta uh, for Paul O'Connell ran third into uh, Don Telsu in a bumper Don Telsu actually won handy enough today for Harry Cobden um, won a maiden hurl first time out 
and that's only last October. Um, it looked like that they were going to go, they wanted to find out was it going to be um, which three mile race that run it, run it in in Cheltenham. Um, they ran it behind uh, Shanna Bob. And then they ran it in the Pertimps qualifier. And it was third that day behind Cuthbert Dibble, who actually finished third in the final in Cheltenham there. That Lord Snooty is a decent enough beast as well. But um, that was a decent race, and it's it's it was a, a, a class two. So down to class four, big, strong, harsh. Uh, it'll be able to carry the weight. That's it here in third place, second from the left as we pick it up uh, in the straight. Red jacket as Foylan and Jeffroy continue to trade punches. Yes, he's bearing down on them, and Cuthbert Dibble now is beginning to thread his way through. Back in fifth is Castle Russian. Here's the third last. Cuthbert Dibble comes alongside Foylan. Yes, on the left is challenging. Jeffroy is relegated a fourth. It's going to be slow motion stuff up the uh, run in here towards the last couple of flights, but Cuthbert Dibble has powered on here. Moves over three lengths clear, not particularly fluent. Bunny hopped. It. Foylan is chasing. Yesterday in third, Jeffroy rallying pluckily under pressure. And then Lord Snooty, one to go. A long run in. Cuthbert Dibble, neatly enough over the last. Three lengths ahead. Yesterday on the left. Lord Snooty, striped jacket, is staying on under pressure. Heading now inside the last 200 metres. Cuthbert Dibble. Lord Snooty is inching closer. Yes, Day is back in third. Cuthbert Dibble in front by over two lengths. Lord Snooty continues to stay on. They're racing for the shadows of the post. Cuthbert Dibble is all out. Lord Snooty is still closing. Cuthbert Dibble grinds out. Stay on well with her there. I think that the ground was sort of unsuitable for it as well. Because if you look when it did, that was on heaviest ground that day. When it did... When, uh, when it beat Magical King, it was on good to soft. And when it won its pint to pint, it was on yielding ground. So the heavy ground the last day, uh, I thought it behaved well to run as well as it did on the ground. So tomorrow, uh, it's carrying top weight. Uh, but See that we're we're placing a lot of horses lately. So the top three finished there I was saying six to five. Um it might suit someone. Um and the only time uh, it has wind surgery as well, but the only time it won actually, that's what I meant to say as well. The only time it won Richard McLaren was riding it as well. And he's riding it tomorrow. When it won its maiden hurdle there, two and a half mile good to soft. So you could even back it each way at nine to two. It's nine to two with a couple of bookies there. Just five to one here. He'll probably drift out to fives again. I wouldn't say there'd be a big punch. It's an open race. It's one to watch tomorrow. Risky one at Southern. Tomorrow there's a, a mile six race. Artesian Dancer is the favourite for that. One paced. Um, we were on it a couple of times when it didn't win and then it, we weren't on it. it. It done us once. But there's a, a horse there that we might take a punt on. Hasn't ran for a while. It's KS Control for Stuart Edmonds. Stuart Edmonds is in really good form. He's another winner there tonight. He's uh, 5 for 15. He's won a couple of races for us lately as well. But this horse... If you look at it, it used to run in Ireland at the start of its career. Um, won two races in Dundalk for Andy Oliver. Uh, got a rate in uh, the high 70s. And when it came over to England, uh, the 28th of November 2022, hadn't ran for a couple of months. But he stuck it into a mile and a half handicap race. And there was decent horses there, Lexington Knight and uh, Norton Cross. And he went out in front. And he done it gutsy enough.
Lolton Cross was 7 to 4 favourite. He's out there in front. Control, heading to the crown of the bend with Mask of Anarchy chased along in pursuit. Lexington Knight up the inner pretty bouquet. Dark Blue and Yellow has got clear sailing. Knowlton Cross, Orange Cap away to the left is beginning to unwind. Percy Willis and the cheek pieces down the middle is running on as they dash inside the last furlong. Chaos Control now tackled by Lexington Knight. Knowlton Cross from the rear. The grey Bugle Major is running on. Chaos Control has made every inch closed down by Knowlton Cross but holding on Chaos Control from the Midland Park pair not Knowlton Cross There's only a three year old that time and that was off what 74 so it's only two pound higher tomorrow an in yard an in for him yard may get a a softish lead out front. I know it's a long stretch in uh, Southern, but 13 to 2 or 7 to 1 around that. It's worth the risk. Um, it's an open enough affair. Um, great race on Friday. We have a great card at um, Newcastle. We have a decent enough card there as well as. Um, at Lingfield, but the, the main one is uh, Newcastle. Uh, most of them are 150,000, and there's a 200,000 race. So we know lots of those names they will be when we go through it tomorrow night. And then Saturday we have Medan. Same thing, we have a lot of top class horses that we have backed before and won with. Be interesting to see uh, when I delve into what Augustin Rodin is up against. In the the Shima Classic. That's at four o'clock. I'll have to get me my day organised in such a way that I'll see a lot of these. I'll have to go to Belfast, so might wait and go in the evening. Anyway. Bash the bookies over and out.